You don't have to go to another planet to be an explorer. You can be an explorer right here on Earth. But to do that, you need the right vehicle. The Ford Explorer. The SUV you think of when you think of an SUV. Redesigned from the ground up. For exploring after school pickups. For exploring new shoes for your daughter. And a rotisserie chicken, because you just can't bring yourself to cook tonight. The all-new 2020 Ford Explorer. It's the greatest exploration vehicle of all time. companies in the world, as well as being one of the few to survive the 1930s Great Depression. Tree. The automobile was a plaything for the rich. Most models were complicated machines that required a chauffeur conversant with its individual mechanical skills to drive it. Henry Ford was determined to build a simple, reliable, and affordable car. A car the average American worker could afford. Auto D6. Henry Ford built his first automobile, which he called a quadricycle, at his home in Detroit. He then took adventures into automobile manufacturing by co-founding the Detroit Automobile Company and later reorganized into Henry Ford Motor Company. Two years later, the company was falling out and Ford left the company with the rights to his name and a few hundred dollars in hand. Ford later founded Ford Motor Company with $28,000 in cash from 12 investors, most notably John and Horace Dodge, a middle-class American. The extremely successful model was because of Ford's efficient fabrication, including assembly line production instead of individual handcrafting. Model T not only provided inexpensive transportation on a massive scale, but also signified innovation for the rising middle class and became a powerful symbol of America's age of modernization. Central to Ford's ability to produce an affordable car was the development of the assembly line that increased the efficiency of manufacture and decreased its cost. Ford did not conceive the concept. He perfected it. Prior to the introduction of the assembly line, cars were individually crafted by teams of skilled workmen. A slow and expensive procedure. The assembly line reversed the process of automobile manufacturing. Instead of workers going to the car, the car came to the worker who performed the same task of assembly over and over again. With the introduction and perfection years later, Ford had more than 20 overseas assembly plants in Europe, Latin America, Canada, Asia, South Africa, and Australia. The Ford had become the world's most familiar make of car. In 1927, the last Model T and the first new Model A were produced. Ford acquired the Lincoln Motor Company, which would produce Ford's luxury Lincolns and Continentals. In 1938, Ford introduced the first Mercury, a car
Uh, I know when we brought our car home, our father-in-law was like, is this a Range Rover? And they said, wow, it looks, it's really sleek, really nice. You know, and it's, we said, no, it's, it's, a, it's a Ford, it's a Ford Explorer. I definitely am a Ford guy. I trust their vehicles. The things that we're packing in this car is kids. We have a double stroller that we keep in there. It gives us a lot more space and a lot more options as far as um, packing in the car. And Well, definitely the Ford Explorer is an extension to us. The fact that I have my family inside this car and I have my wife driving this car, the safety aspect of it, you know, it definitely is a part of us. This is my mommy car. Like, I have the baby in the second row and then I have Isaac in the third row. And so I just, I'm always on the go. We were big on family, so a lot of our family members travel with us instead of, you know, taking separate cars. They could just all go in there. And it's so roomy. There's plenty of leg space. The features that I like, uh, I'm definitely a music guy. So I like the fact that everything is right here on the center. So, you know, you can still be safe and drive, but at the same time, you know, select tracks and, you know, scroll through your LCD screen. This is a bigger car and, you know, sometimes it's hard just using your rear view mirrors to see what's behind you. So the safety of having the backup camera plays a, a big part in why we picked the Ford, but also to, um, you know, to keep us safe. But yeah, we, we definitely love it. Everything, the, the way the style of the car is, um, the gas mileage, the MPG, the space, just the overall look, the, everything just fit our needs. All I ask Ford to do is just to keep it up. I'm Freddie Sanchez. I'm Alexandria Sanchez. Who are you? And this is Melody. And we drive a 2017 Ford Explorer. in the input stage is the external factor evaluation matrix EFE. It is a strategic management tool often used for assessment of current business condition. It is a good tool to visualize and prioritize the opportunities and threats that a business is facing. The EFE matrix process uses the same five steps as the IFE matrix which is firstly is these factors, second assign weights, third, weight factors, fourth is to multiply weights by ratings, and lastly is to total all weighted scores. As for the case study, Ford can take advantage of the sector for the market who wants to go green by producing green marketing addressing solutions such as hybrid cars. Also, availability of low cost and personalized advertising allows Ford the opportunity to get its message out to the right potential consumers quickly and effectively. But the threats are employees have trouble making the sale happen. Employees do not have the ability to get consumers to commit.
there are 5 steps that needs to follow to develop CPM metrics. Step 1, a company must list key critical success factors which includes internal and external factors that happen within their company. Step 2, after listed the key critical success factors, assign each factor a weight range from 0.0, .0 which is not important, to 1.0, very important. Total weight must be equal to 1. Step 3, assign each factor a rating range from 4 to 1, which 1 is the major weakness, 2 is the minor weakness, 3 is the minor strength, and 4 is the major strength. Step 4, multiply each factor's weight by its rating to determine a weighted score. Step 5, sum the weighted score for each variable to determine the total weighted score. Highest is 4, lowest is 1, and average is 2.5. The process of constructing a SWOT matrix can be summarized in 8 steps. The first step is to list the firm's key external opportunities. Step 2, list the firm's key external threats. Step 3, list the firm's key internal strengths. Step 4, list the firm's key internal weaknesses. Step 5, match internal strengths with external opportunities and record the resultant SO strategies in the appropriate cell. Step 6. Match internal weaknesses with external opportunities and record the resultant WO strategies. Step 7. Match internal strengths with external threats and record the resultant ST strategies. Step 8. Match internal weaknesses with external threats and record the resultant WT strategies. The BCG Matrix model is a portfolio planning model developed by Bruce Henderson of Boston Consulting Group. It is based on classification of products into four categories based on combination of market growth and market share relative to the largest competitor. Placing products in the BCG Matrix results in four categories in a portfolio of a company which is the first stars, cash cow, fashion marks and dogs. BCG stars is high growth and also high market share. BCG question mark is high growth but low market share. BCG cash cows is low in growth but high in market shares. BCG dog is low in growth but also low in market share. As shown in the matrix, 
podcast cause high relative market share and high market growth. stage there are only one matrix which is quantitative strategic planning matrix qsbm it is a high level strategic management approach for evaluating possible strategies qsbm provides an analytical method for comparing feasible alternative actions or strategies when company executives think about what to do and which way to go they usually have to prioritize list of strategies. If they like one strategy over another, they move it up on the list. This process is very much intuitive and subjective. The QSPM method introduces some numbers into this approach making it a little more expert technique. In the case study, QSPM compares two alternatives. Based on strategies in the stage 1, which is IFE and EFE and also included CPM, and stage 2, which include BCG, SPACE, and IE, the company executives determined that Ford needs to pursue an aggressive strategy aimed at development of new products and further penetration of the market. They also identified that this strategy can be executed in two ways, which is one, is through marketing development strategy and the other strategy is through technology investment strategy. They are now asking which option is the better one. By doing some easy calculation in the QSPM, we came to a conclusion that marketing development is a better option. This is given by the sum total attractiveness score figure. The marketing development is higher score than technology investment. The marketing development strategy has a score of 4.97 in the QSPM shown above, whereas the technology investment strategy has a smaller score of 4.66. I'm Jim Hackett, CEO and President of Ford Motor Company. Since we set out on our sustainability journey 20 years ago, the world has evolved. Congestion of transportation, 
It's becoming a big societal problem. And the transportation system that grew up around the automobile, it's no longer working for the global economy, for its people or for the planet. Matter of fact, we need to redesign the whole system. Now I realize this may sound funny coming from a car company, but at Ford, we're taking a different approach. We know climate change is real, and we remain committed to doing our part to reduce CO2 emissions as part of the Paris Climate Accord. We've made our plants more sustainable, and we have a lineup of electric vehicles coming that include the F-150 and the Mustang that's included in a bigger $11 billion investment in new types of propulsion. And we're making great progress in the development of the self-driving vehicle. But we need to do even more. The price is high if we don't change course by 2020. We risk missing the point where we can avoid runaway climate change. Now consider there will be four billion cars on the road soon. And even if they're all zero emissions, as Bill Ford says, a greener traffic jam is still a traffic jam. Now as we look into this, cities are making good progress on achieving their CO2 reduction goals. But with the transportation systems and the networks around them, they haven't made the kind of progress they need to. That's why we just can't work to build cleaner, smarter vehicles alone. We have to go all in on orchestrating the smart world as well. We hear people talking about this, but Ford is doing it, and doing it in a way that's right for our communities and for our planet. Our big idea behind all this is a notion called the Transportation Mobility Cloud. Now, this is an open source cloud port, uh, platform created by Autonomic and first launched at CES in 2018. It's nicknamed TMC. It has the capacity and capability to bring together all the different data streams in a city in their transportation system from all different kinds of smart connected modes of transportation to all of the smart connected infrastructure with one common language so that they can all talk to each other and thereby orchestrate more efficient journeys. So this will connect the transportation system into a network that's actually designed to work for how a people and goods move in cities and therefore dramatically reduce emissions that create cleaner air. Imagine if you did not have to waste gas driving around looking for a parking spot or if your vehicle instantly knew the most efficient route for your daily journey. Think of the less time spent on the road and therefore we have less emissions. Well, this is a big change for our business in the world. We're taking concrete steps to accelerate the development of solutions that run on that TMC, including building new public-private coalitions to get us there. Why? Because creating smart vehicles for a smart world is based on our vision of easier, safer, and cleaner journeys for all. So now, I'd like to ask Greg Shy of ABB to teach us about his company's commitment to sustainability and to keep this challenge going. Thank you.